And so our final case, case three, is where the test statistic is off the edge of the table. Well, it's not even on the table. It would be listed, but we've hit an edge of the table, the left or the right side. So if you're dealing with a one-tail test, you only have one of two answers. Your p-value is greater than 0 0.10 or your p-value is less than 0 0.005. And this explains when that would be the case, but really, I don't memorize that. I just kind of look for what's happening on the table. The two-tailed test scenario is, of course, double the numbers above where the inequalities are going the same direction, but we'll see this down below. So example C. The test statistic I'm looking for is 0.37, n equals 11, and I have a right tail test, which really tells me that I have a one tail test. So I go to row n minus 1, which for us would be row 10, and I'm looking for the number 0.37. Well, I'm reading along the edge of the table and I see 1.8 something, which is too big, 1.3 something, which is too big, and then there's no numbers left. My number would be listed if the row kept going, but it doesn't. So this means that I want the p-value that would be listed over here in this yellow box, but there's nothing listed there. So what is the trend that I see? That it went from five cents to 10 cents, so whatever's to the right of that number would be bigger than 10 cents. My p-value is greater than 10 cents, and I'm just using money to help since everyone seems to do better with that, but you know, my p-value is greater than 0 0.10. The probability of that test statistic is more than 10%. Next example, I have a two-tailed test because I have not equal to, and because n is 16, I need to go to row 15, but I accidentally wrote 16, let me fix that. Poof, it's fixed, I'm magical. <laughs> okay, so I'm reading across the table and I'm looking for 3.73. The first number is 2.9, which isn't big enough. And then the numbers after that keep continuing to get smaller. This means the number I need would be before the first number ever showed up on the table. So I need to read up to the two tail row at the top and my p-value would be listed here off to the left. So what I'm going to do is go from right to left, the opposite of the direction. Let me get rid of that so it doesn't confuse you. The opposite of the direction that we read. So the number went from, whoops, sorry, two cents to one cent to what would be here. Well, the trend was the numbers were getting smaller. So that reminds me that my p-value would be smaller, smaller than the last number I have to look at. So my p-value is less than 0 0.01. My p-value is less than a penny. Last example. So again, I have a one-tail test because it's a left tail. P-values are never negative. So I need to go to row n minus one. So I go to row two. And remember, we don't look for negative numbers. I'm looking for positive 0.26. As I read across, I see positive 2.9 something, positive 1.8. So the numbers continued to get small enough, but they didn't get as small as 0.26. So when I look up above, knowing that the number I wanted, positive 0.26, would be off the edge, I see the trend was it went from 5 cents up to 10 cents. The value is going up. So my p-value would be larger than the value before it. So therefore, I need to answer with something larger than that. The p-value is larger than 0.10.